This is Russell James from the University of Georgia with a quick review of Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design Strategies, or SEPTED Strategies. Core SEPTED Strategies basically comes down to the SAT test, the criminal's SAT test, that is, number one, surveillance, will I be seen? Number two, access, can I get in and out? And number three, territoriality, does anyone care what happens here? What's some research about surveillance? Well, one study showed that burglarized houses had less visual access to immediately neighboring houses than did non-burglarized houses. This is true also in a commercial context. Convenience stores experienced mean annual robbery rate reductions after installing closed circuit television systems or installing video cameras with monitors. We behave differently when we think we're being watched. Here's a fun study of uh, psychology professors on a, an office beverage system that was available with payment on an honor system. The picture above the payment instructions rotated weekly and it turns out payments were higher when the picture of eyes were posted. Another example, two groups with two computer backgrounds. Each group received, each person in each group received $10. A computer question was asked, do you want a sharing of it with any of the other anonymous participants? It turned out that whether or not the computer screen had a picture of eyes on it dramatically changed the amount of sharing taking place. What about access? Well, research shows that burglarized houses had fewer fences and lock gates surrounding the yard than did non-burglarized houses. Here's an example of a study from Ohio State where preventing access to a parking garage by adding chain link fencing and lighting to lower levels led to a 50% drop in reported crime after the improvements. Territoriality, does anyone care what happens here? One study found that burglarized houses had fewer symbolic barriers characteristic of primary territories, fewer markers depicting the identity of their territory owners. In another study of 400 convenience store robberies, one significant difference between robbed and non-robbed stores was distance from the nearest graffiti. Graffiti is an example that shows nobody cares what happens here, low territoriality. So let's look at some visual examples and ask, does it pass the SAT, Surveillance Access Territoriality? Here's a SEPTED disaster. If I wanted to do something in this area, even during the day or especially at night, will I be seen? No, it's a surveillance fail. Can I get in and out easily? Absolutely, it's an access fail. Does anyone care what happens here? Absolutely not, it's a territoriality fail. Another example, anyone cares what happens here? No, territoriality fail. Can I get in and out easily? Absolutely, it's an access fail. And certainly at night, it's going to be a failure of surveillance as well. Does anyone care what happens here? Kind of looks like nobody does. What about access? Well, access, can I get in or out? It turns out that it's kind of hard to get in and out. But guess what? Territoriality can impact access. If no one cares what happens here, does it feel less risky to try opening the door with a crowbar or bolt cutter? Access barriers alone can be overcome. Surveillance plus access plus territoriality working together, that's what creates the real effect. Take a look at this fence. Does the fence make it harder to get in and out? Absolutely. But think about the surveillance effects. Does the fence make it less likely I'll be seen if I'm trying to break in through the back door? That's a problem. Surveillance and access and territoriality may impact each other. Let's take a look at this picture. Does anybody care what happens here? Well, the fence says maybe, but everything else says no. Nobody cares. Does anyone care what happens here? I'd say yes. High territoriality, high level of maintenance, defying borders. In fact, these short decorative fences can enhance territoriality on the inside of the fence without disconnecting the home from the surrounding neighborhood. Short fencing, even if it's solid, doesn't create any surveillance problems. As fencing gets higher, the access barrier increases, but the risk of visually disconnecting from the neighborhood also grows. We look at this, does anyone care what happens here inside the fence? Probably so, but outside the fence, definitely not. The problem is, is that sometimes high fences can diminish territoriality outside the fence. Can anyone even see what happens outside of these fences in this alleyway? Does anyone care what happens outside the fence? Probably not. High solid fences may create spaces with little surveillance and little territoriality. Some high fences can control access, but they fail the SAT test because they block surveillance and, in this example, send a clear message that the area is dangerous, crime is accepted, and no one cares what happens outside the wall. Here's an example where making the chain link fence opaque blocked surveillance and permitted graffiti that shows a lack of external territoriality. But with proper design and maintenance, high fences can not only limit access, 
but can do so without damaging surveillance or territoriality. Another great example of a high fence that completely blocks access without damaging surveillance or territoriality. Just adding spikes can add a visceral element of access reduction that can still feel decorative and residential. Of course, you can go too far with anything and get clear beyond the decorative or residential idea. Window bars certainly limit access, but may also send a negative territoriality message about neighborhood safety. Instead, consider glass block that can create security similar to window bars, but without the stigma. Most burglary entries do not occur through the front door. Why is that? Well, it's because of natural surveillance. Much more likely that other people can see what you're doing at the front door. This means that open access to side or rear entry points where there's no natural surveillance makes for more attractive burglary ent entrances. What do you do? Well, access barriers to side or rear entrance can reduce the risk. Of course, a very short barrier may provide very little access control. As barriers rise, access is reduced. But if you go with tall, opaque barriers, it can limit access, but may also eliminate natural surveillance. Consider the line of sight for entry points. If you get in through this entrance, are you visible to outsiders once you're in? As you walk along, am I visible to outsiders even as I'm trying to get in through an access point in the back? That can be a concern. Consider the sight lines in this aerial shot of a new group of duplexes. Let's take a look at this duplex, the front, rear, and side potential entrances. What are the sight lines for the potential entry points in this unit? 10 residences have sight lines to the rear entry, 16 residences have sight lines to the front entry, and 11 residences have sight lines to the side window. Let's compare this to another residence and its rear, side, and front entrances. Only two residences have sight lines to the rear entrance, and nobody has a sight line to the side window. You've got a zone outside the residence where sight lines are covered by wooded area with a link to a walking trail. So clear difference in which residence has the better SAT scores. What natural surveillance issue best predicted convenience store robberies in a study? Well, professors at UCLA found that visibility from outside the store to inside the store was the most important sight line. If I can't see what's happening inside the store, it's much easier and much safer to commit a robbery because passerbys can't see what's happening. It turns out that visibility from outside the store to inside the store was a more important predictor of convenience store robberies than even the number of clerks working or the proximity to drug traffic, gangs, or subsidized housing. At night, of course, surveillance depends almost entirely on lighting, but lighting itself can't fix surveillance problems if it's, the problems are created by both darkness and solid barriers. Lighting alone is important, but it can't overcome natural barriers to surveillance. Lighting can also be important during the day, especially if you've got a dark area where lines of sight are limited. Neighborhood watch signs may improve territoriality by indicating that people care what happens in an area, but if nobody really cares about the area, the sign may not have the desired effect. Territoriality fails basically when it looks like nobody's maintaining the area, which means no one's really claiming ownership. In short, nobody cares what's happening there. What signals do you get that territoriality appears weak in this picture? Closed stairwells have natural surveillance uh, problems and easy access for entry and escape not good areas from a SEPTED perspective. Combine this with some territoriality deficiencies like we see here, and stairwells can create SEPTED problem areas. But design solutions can improve the natural surveillance for stairwells. Open stairwells have strong natural surveillance properties. All ranges of natural surveillance levels are possible for stairwells, depending upon the design solution chosen. You can also have auditory surveillance. A quote from one book shows that replacing bathroom entrance doors with right angle entrances permit the warning sounds of crime to travel more freely and reduce the sense of isolation. Cul-de-sacs may limit access, making visiting cars more noticeable. Cul-de-sacs also make automobile escape more problematic because there's only one exit route. Street closures can provide similar access results if it didn't start out as a cul-de-sac originally. You can even block pedestrian access with street closures. High-rise buildings may provide surveillance, but it turns out they provide weaker surveillance of street-level activity because of structural separation, distance separation, and sound separation. This separation also limits the sense of territoriality over street-level activities. Instead, if you look at communities with mid-rise balconies, this creates stronger surveillance and territoriality, connecting residents with street-level views. 
mid-rise balcony neighborhoods, create safer street level areas with high levels of perceived surveillance and perceived territoriality.